Good morning. I always stand in just the wrong spot, don't I? Ah, it is good to see you all today. I have a couple of announcements as we continue to gather this morning. First of all, updates with our prayer list. Uh, Prayers of Thanksgiving, Lynn Frank is doing much better and uh, wants to offer her thanks to all the support that you have given her uh, in this long road to recovery. And so we are taking her off the list as well as the Cudmores. They're doing much better as well. So um, we give thanks to God for that healing and also celebrating uh, this week with the Berdadiches. They have another granddaughter and her name is Reagan. Yay! We also want to add Gary Dingman, uh, Wanda Roberts' brother who was diagnosed with COVID this week, so please hold them in prayers as well. We have a new worship series starting next week, and uh, there's information in your bulletin as well as the newsletter that was emailed to folks. Uh, if you didn't get one of the, the newsletters, I realize I didn't print any hard copies this morning. I will get that done. Um, but we have the worship series is to invite us into a more heart-centered life, uh, reflecting on money. And you may go, wait a minute, money and the heart? Uh, they do tie together, and we are going to lean on uh, It's a Wonderful Life, the movie and its characters and the way they respond to money in the movie, it will be woven into our worship service and there are also opportunities to gather in conversation as well in small groups or in, in family units. Uh, there's a couple of opportunities I'm going to be doing on Thursdays, uh, one here at 10 and one that night on Thursdays on Zoom at seven. So whatever format works best for you. Uh, also, we have sec Second Harvest food truck coming on Tuesday. So talk to Tina. If Do we still need volunteers? It looks like we've got a, a big group of volunteers. Okay, did the Shobes get a hold of you? Uh -huh. Okay, awesome. Uh, so that's on Tuesday, and talk to Tina if you have more questions. Um, and also add to the prayer list, my um, Uncle Ron and Patsy, Ron lost his brother this week suddenly, and so the, the funeral is today in Missouri. So hold the Martin clan in your prayers, if you would, um, as they grieve. I have Scott here. Uh, the music today is all samples of what a Rogers console would add to our, our congregation. So the, you won't necessarily be singing, you'll be reflecting on the words because the music is more of, um, well, I'll let Scott explain. He knows better. Right. Well, thank you. Uh, of course, I'm Scott Youngren from Southern California. Sorry. <laughs> in uh, 2011, I retired from uh, aerospace in Lytton, Northrop Grumman, and immediately my friend Nelson Dodge enlisted me to go work and repair Rogers organs. So I've been doing that for the last 10 years. But looky here, I discovered a really nice Cassavant organ in Sandpoint. But then I looked at the console, and according to uh, Karina, it's not in good shape. It has four combination actions, two of them work. So when I told Nelson, he says, I've got a solution for you if you'd like. <clears throat> and that kicked off the possibility of picking up a used Rogers organ that's only three years old and it has ten generals, five great, five swell, five choir, and twenty levels of memory. 
And not only that, it'll play the pipes, and it could even play an organ from up here in the front, because it has a provision for an antiphonal organ. So that's a, a short list of the things that it could happen. And I have a brochure on that model in the back, if anybody would like to look at it. And so what we've got is several recordings, of course, from an installation of a console that's similar to this one. So uh, we'll have, during the course of the, uh, we'll have now the green blade rises and Amazing Grace. And these are played by uh, a friend of mine, Christoph Bull. The Claire de Lune was played by John West, another friend of mine. And finally, uh, the closing will be uh, Vidor Toccata. How about that? That's all. Thank you. Diana also has uh, a quick announcement for you as well. I thought it would be fun to review kind of what your Luther Park board did this week. I have been writing grants and we had a site visit from Stimson Miller Lumber Company. It's one of the largest lumber companies in, um, in the Northwest. And when you have a site visit, it means that your grant is somewhere near the top. And they come to look at you to see if you're real. So <laughs> I met the representative of Bernie, uh, Bernie Graham, uh, and we found out this week that when you go into Luther Park, you've got to wear not only the mask, but you've got to wear the headset also. So what we did is we decided that it was only 57 degrees outside, and instead of going into Luther Park and exposing Luther Park to any bugs, we would use our newly patio and um, walkway. So we set up on the patio and we waited for Bernie Graham to come and she came and I showed her around Luther Park with our visors on and she was really, really impressed. First of all, Luther Park is a gem that not a lot of people know about in Northern Idaho. And whether we win this grant or we don't get this grant, it's really good to show people what a fine, outstanding, delightful building we have. <clears throat> so anyway, Bernie casually mentioned something, and I said, well, who drove you here? Because she came from um, Montana. Oh, and she said, oh, my husband. And then a few lines later, she said, oh, you know, my husband. He owns, he's the CEO of Stimson Miller. And I said, we don't want him to sit in the car. And she said, oh. He won't come in. And I said, but I baked a huckleberry pie. Wouldn't he like some? So I sent Keith as the board representative to invite him for huckleberry pie. And she said, the minute we said huckleberry pie, he hopped right out of the car. And so we had not only the representative, but we had the CEO of um, Stimson and Miller. And we just got started with our meeting. And all of a sudden, this voice, this voice came. And the voice said, looks like you're having fun down there. And we looked up, and this lady on the second floor had thrown her window open and yelled out, looks like you're having fun down there. And it was just like somebody on high spoke. And we all laughed and turned and waved at her. But whether we win or whether we don't win this grant for um, Luther Park to finish our patio and our garden, we'd like to say thank you to all the people that donated into it. I'd like to say thank you to the board. And the board really pulled hard on Wednesday afternoon to make sure that um, we all work together 
and it was a fun event. So we're positive, we're hopeful, but people have enjoyed Luther Park. And I know we have hiccups and things like that, but your board is working hard to do the best we can. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed my update. I invite us to take a breath. Come into this time for, of worship for healing and remembering what it's like to be a child in the presence of God, that trust that you are cared for and that you are loved this day. As we gather together with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of creation, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A little a cappella here. So, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Our first reading comes from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With Glory and honor you have crowned them. You have made them to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, Well, Mo what did Moses command you? 
He said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they no longer are two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples, asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them into his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. There are very few families who have not felt the impact of divorce. Whether you've gone through one yourself, or maybe your parents, maybe your children, we all know the brokenness it leaves behind. Even when it is the best option for life and flourishing, It still erodes trust in relationships, families, and the community. It's just messy. Friends, even the church, feel like they have to choose sides. And too many, when they hear this passage, cringe, feel shamed, and the wounds get reopened. So where are we to find healing that we need? Well, first of all, we need to recognize that marriage in Jesus' day is not the same as today. Marriage in the ancient world, at least among the vast majority of the social strata, was primarily a means of ensuring families' economic stability and social privileges, both for creating offspring and inter-family alliances. Basically, he married whomever was available in your particular cultural community. The idea of soulmates and finding mutual fulfillment is a modern concept. Marriage then primarily ensured safety and stability for women and produced a lineage for man. And men pretty much had all the power. Well, when the Pharisees come to Jesus, They aren't actually interested in the question of divorce. They come to Jesus in order to form a trap, test him with this question. Is it legal? Is it okay for a man to divorce a woman? Well, the two strongest arguments at the time among rabbinic tradition for the legality of divorce came out of the scribal school of Halil arguing the divorce was allowed for any reason, and the school of Shammai arguing that to allow divorce only in the case of adultery. So Jesus is aware of these debates, and also aware that the Pharisees don't actually want to debate that they're more interested in the law than divorce, more interested in tripping Jesus up rather than caring about marriage, Jesus responds with the question, what does Moses say? Well, they turn and they quote the passage that they were thinking of, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verses 1 through 4, saying that divorce is permissible. 
And, and you get the sense here that the Pharisees seem to assume that if Moses allowed it, then it was part of God's will. Jesus counts, counters by pointing them away from the law toward God's intention for creation, in particular, why God set aside marriage as important for human beings. In Genesis chapter 2, we discover humanity is intended to be in partnered relationships, that it's not good to be alone. Beginning with God and then continuing between two persons, companionship is parted, part of the created order. Or as pa Pastor David Loos reflects in his blog, Jesus is inviting us to imagine communities centered in and on real relationships. Relationships founded in love and mutual dependence, fostered by respect and dignity, and pursued for the sake of the health of the community and the protection of the vulnerable. Because in order for us to trust God, whom we cannot see, we need human relationships where we can learn how to trust and flourish. Yes, the first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, mind, and strength. But learning how to trust gets learned first in the arms of our parents. As babies and toddlers unable to fend for ourselves. Children, as they grow, they learn how to live with and work with and love others by watching their parents. In the Ten Commandments, the ones protecting community, they begin with honoring parent and child relationships. And then the next follows, thou shall not commit adultery, therefore protecting marriage. Yes, if we fully trust God, then we will love others. But often we don't know how this feels to be held by God, so we need to be held by our families first. Which is why Jesus challenges the Pharisees and becomes so indignant with his disciples. Both keep looking for loopholes in the law to justify ending their relationships with the most vulnerable in society. And in this case, it's women and children. Jesus argues, marriage is not something you enter into until something better comes along. Just because someone else catches your eye, men and women don't have the right to abandon their partners for something else that they want more that doesn't belong to them. And in the case of wives at that time, it left them unprotected in society. And Jesus says to the Pharisees, you shouldn't want that loophole. So yes, God allows divorce because we have a hard time honoring these relationships, mutually depending on one another, lifting each other up, seeing and treating each other as beloved reflections of God. Lust, anger, greed, and all the other ways in which we let sin in, and it hardens our hearts. And when that happens, it puts the other in danger. So God gives laws to protect the vulnerable. In the case of divorce, it gives a way for the vulnerable to get out. But Jesus argues the law wouldn't be needed if we lived as God intended marriage to be a place of mutual trust and partnership, a relationship many have told me is hard work. I will forever remember my first blessing of a 60th anniversary, and I asked them, give me some advice about marriage. And together, at the same time, they said, hard work. And I was fresh out of seminary. I was like, wait a minute, no, it's love. And it is love, but it's a choice to love each and every day. Or as I heard at the wedding on, on Sunday, choosing to look at your beloved and breathe 
breathe and look at your beloved. Yes, when each are seeking the best for the other, it creates the foundation of trust for the next generation, which continues to radiate out for the whole community, a community that trusts one another, even if they do not agree on everything. With trust, it remains strong through blessings and storms. Sadly, we lose this as we grow older. The quality of being children, being vulnerable, being able to depend on others for help, to meet and expect others to be worthy of your trust, it decreases over time. As we get hurt, we, we trust less, and interactions with others becomes harder and harder which also makes it harder for us to perceive and live into the kingdom of God that draws near to us through Jesus Christ. The other day I was leaving the parsonage and uh, Jasper Olson, the grandson of former Pastor Dave Olson, was on a walk with his grandmother Carla. And she was talking to the neighbor, so Jasper saw me and yelled over, Hi! And I responded, Hi, how are you? And I don't know if he didn't hear my question or not, but he was really excited about his bike. And he proceeded to tell me that they were out riding his bike that he got for Christmas. And then he asked me, what did you get for Christmas? And it stopped me short. I mean, it was September. I couldn't remember back that far, let alone the gifts that I unwrapped on Zoom last December. Well, that didn't stop him as I was trying to think he kept talking and asking questions, so I finally introduced myself. I mean, I don't think that we had actually met before. He may have seen me as he walked through the neighborhood. So I was surprised as I was introducing myself, he said, oh, I know, Grandma told me. Well, we've all had these encounters with children. We've witnessed this curiosity this assumption that adults are helpful, that children can be our friends, that dogs, when you run up to them, will keep wagging their tails, this getting caught up in the moment of discovery and trust, or even when they're feeling lost, that if we are there to help or to play, they will let us, whether they know us or not. And we also know that hearts begin to harden when that trust is betrayed. And God knows this too. So God has given us boundaries, rules to help protect those precious relationships, protect those who are vulnerable, and help us turn back to his intentions for all of creation. And he also sent us Jesus, who knows our brokenness, who was born as a baby into our arms. Both our ability to care and love, but also our tendency to hurt others in response to being hurt. Or, or we begin building those walls to protect us. And our hearts become more and more walled off. So did, Jesus comes to us now to help us to remember, remind us that we need to remember what it's like to be a child. You remember the movie Hook? That's a great one for that. Remember the trust that children have and the powerful relationship this trust creates when we honor their, their vulnerability and when we lean into it with our own. Let the little child within you Come to Jesus today. Receive your blessing. And when the least of these comes to you, remember you are welcoming the very presence of God, broken and blessed, united by this one love, a bond which cannot be broken. May the healing begin. Amen.
made children and heirs of God's promise. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you have raised up faithful leaders throughout history. Empower those discerning a call to ministry in all seminarians, that they continue to be formed for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. You have established a diverse and beautiful creation. Revive declining species and preserve endangered lands. Cultivate in us a sense of wonder and sacredness for the world that you created and entrusted to our care. Lord, in your mercy. You desire for us not only to be alone, but to live in community with one another. Strengthen relationships between nations and peoples that we might celebrate and support one human family made in your image. Lord, in your mercy. You share in our experiences and our struggles. Bless all who live with any mental or physical disabilities. Inspire creative communities, spaces, and environments that are accessible and hospitable so all may join in your celebration and praise. Lord, in your mercy. You have established and nurtured relationships that extend beyond those gathered here today. Bless members who can no longer travel to worship with us. Be with those in other states, family, friends, community that calls themselves First Lutheran Church. And we also lift up to you all those on our prayer list this day. Gary, Jack and Darlene, Kathy, Dawn and Steve, Debbie, Jean, Mary, David, Francis, Dar, Carrie, Alyssa, Betty, George, Chris, Charles, Nikki, Wendy, Cara, Trey, Tom, Hunter, Mike, Marguerite, Janet, all others that are on our hearts and minds today. We also lift before you Luther Park, its residents, their families and staff, all healthcare workers and facilities that are stretched thin, nations and communities in crisis, and all those organizations that are working tirelessly to meet their needs. Remind us of people near and far that continue a role in this community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. You promise eternal life to all your children. We give thanks for the people of faith who have gone before us, especially this day we lift before you, Scott and Doug, and others that are grieving the loss of sudden loved ones like the Martin clan. Strengthen us as we grieve. Help us to trust the promise of this amazing life that goes on forever through your Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Receive the prayers, O God, of those whose hearts are known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please turn and share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. May you remember, take this time, and give thanks for those moments in your childhood when you were filled with the wonder of God.
let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you so love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we reflect on now the green blade rises. Go in peace. The living word dwells within you.